This week's skill of the week is self-soothe. It comes from the distress tolerance module of DBT. For those of you that are new, DBT stands for Dialectical Behavior Therapy. It's finding out ways we can figure out the middle between our emotions and our actions and make sure that we're acting in line with our values. So let's talk about self-soothe today. When we think about self-soothe, we like to think about using all of our senses and finding a way to help us get through an emotion. My big reminder for families is to not judge people self-soothing. We all self-soothe in really different ways. JD, when you think about yourself going through this with your daughter and all of the other parents that you're helping right now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how parents can self-soothe. I think it's really important as part of self-care to schedule that you're going to need that time. So you sort of radically accept that it's going to be awful and we need some stuff to get us through awful times. So um, for me, and I think for a lot of parents, actually like the shower is a really great place. Like maybe just schedule a shower a couple times a day as a place to really feel all of your emotions and release them and things like that. And showers also really lend themselves to sort of like having some things with nice smells and textures and things like that. And so, I mean, I'm really a person who doesn't feel better after a shower. I like that a lot. Maris, when you think about the patients that you're helping right now and think about yourself and when emotions were really, really big, how do you use self-soothe or how do you see your patients using self-soothe to get through these big emotions? Absolutely. I think similarly to what you were saying, JD, in terms of scheduling it, I think it's also helpful to plan ahead and have soothing things nearby and at the ready. Because if you're at a heightened state of emotion and you're like, I have to go find all my soothing things, that can feel really overwhelming and maybe make you just give up. Um, so I think you can do a lot of things with, um, like you were saying, senses. So maybe putting together a box of things that have soothing textures, like your fuzzy socks, your worry stones, whatever you like. Um, or even you know playing with other senses like sound, having a calming playlist that you put together or a playlist of music that has positive memories associated with it. I think that planning ahead and that, that preparation can be really helpful. I like that idea of having that playlist in advance and really thinking about what's on it. So for instance, if I listen to Adele, even though I haven't gone through a breakup in 20 years, I feel very sad. <laughs> I feel like I might be going through a breakup. So is that, you wanna make sure you're listening to things that help get you through the emotion instead of maybe enhancing it. So I, I like the idea of doing it in advance because sometimes when we're sad, we gravitate towards other sad things. Or sometimes when we're angry, we gravitate to other angry things. And I think it can be really helpful because when you're doing the nutritional rehabilitation, there's generally a fair amount of conflict. It's just a hard situation. So you can do that as a parent-child combo, like put together a distress tolerance box, gather those things together. And I also think that we as parents, when we model for kids, like let's put together one for each of us because I'm not immune from being overwhelmed by distress. You can turn this into something really positive that carries over far beyond the eating disorder. I know that so many of the things we talk about with self-soothe sound maybe silly, right? Like candles and baths, and it's like stereotypical silly. But they, they actually, they're a stereotype for a reason. They do make you feel a little bit better. Playing with a fidget spinner, petting your cat or your dog, these things really do help. And I think sometimes when we're in the moment, we might be even feeling like willful, like, no, I'm not gonna do anything to feel better. I'm just gonna feel bad. Um, or we forget how much better those things can make us feel. So I, I love your suggestion, like before the emotions get too big, make a list of the things that you can do to self-soothe and feel better.